the 9,453rd meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the question, the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted in accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure. I invite the representatives of Israel, Sudan, and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to participate in this meeting. It's so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. Members of the Council have before them documents S slash 2023 slash 792 and S slash 2023 slash 795, each of which contains a text of a separate draft resolution. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements before the vote. Uh, I give the floor to the permanent representative of the Russian Federation. I, I give the I give the floor to the permanent representative of the United States, which I was informed asked for the floor before. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, last week I said that this council needed to let diploma, diplomacy play out. That we needed to give Secretary General Guterres, President Biden, and Secretary Blinken, as well as regional leaders, the chance to move progress forward. And over the past few days, we have seen the fruits of that diplomacy. Thanks to the leadership of the United Nations, the United States, Israel, Egypt, and other countries and partners, humanitarian aid has started to reach Gaza but much more help is needed. And the United States will continue to work with our partners to facilitate the delivery of humanitarian relief into Gaza. This resolution will support that effort. Our text calls for the rapid expansion of aid delivery. We must do everything in our power to meet the dire humanitarian needs of Palestinians in Gaza. Colleagues, over the past few days, we also welcome the release of four people who were being held hostages by Hamas. We thank Qatar and Egypt for their mediation efforts, but roughly 200 people are not yet free. And we heard yesterday in this very chamber, so many families still don't know the whereabouts or conditions of their loved ones. Parents lie awake at night wondering if they will ever see their child again. Yesterday I met with two of those parents, Rachel Goldberg and John Pollan. Their 23-year-old son, Hirsch, an American citizen, was seriously injured and taken hostage by Hamas. And no parent should have to experience this kind of agony and pain. It is heartbreaking, it is infuriating. And a vote for this resolution sends the message that every single hostage must be released immediately without conditions. Colleagues, this is the moment. This, is, this moment is a test for all of us, for the international community and for the very council. The United States has worked to forge a consensus around a resolution that is strong and balanced. 
We solicited input. We listened. We engaged with all council members to incorporate edits, including language on humanitarian pauses and the protection of civilians fleeing conflict, and language on the importance of deconfliction mechanisms to protect UN facilities and personnel. These are important additions to this text, ones we support and ones we should all support. Our resolution also reflects input from numerous, numerous humanitarian organizations working to save lives. The United States was not interested in putting forward a resolution just to put forward a resolution. We were determined to craft a resolution that would enjoy broad support, that would reflect the facts on the ground, that would bolster the work of the UN and the urgent direct diplomacy that the vast majority of council members support. Our approach stands in stark contrast to Russia's. Russia has put forward a text that at the very last minute, with zero, zero consultation. And I'll note that when putting together our resolution, we gave Russia's feedback the same consideration that we gave to other council members. So the bottom line is this. Russia has offered up yet another resolution in bad faith, and this council should not stand for it. Instead, we should come together around the resolution proposed by the United States, a resolution that not only includes but also builds on many elements of the text Brazil put forward last week. Our resolution unequivocally condemns the heinous terrorist attacks by Hamas and other terrorist groups. It affirms the right of member states to defend themselves against the threat to peace and security posed by acts of terrorism. It urges all parties to fully respect and comply with obligations under international law. It underscores the need to protect civilians and humanitarian workers, including UN officials, and medical personnel. It calls for all measures, specifically humanitarian pauses, to allow for full, rapid, safe, and unhindered humanitarian access. It stresses that member states must take concrete steps to prevent an expansion of the conflict beyond Gaza. It underscores the need to work together to deprive Hamas of the funding and weapons it uses to spread terror. And it makes clear that we must continue to work toward a future where two democratic states, Israel and Palestine, live side by side in peace. And this is clearly not what Hamas wants to see. Colleagues, the United States worked exhaustively to draft a strong and balanced text one that meets this moment, and one that we urge all council members to vote in favor of. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of the United States, and I now give the floor to uh, the permanent representative of the Russian Federation. <clears throat> Mr. President, for Two weeks now, the Security Council has not been able to send a collective signal to de-escalate the situation in the area of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. This is extremely lamentable. The bloodshed is ongoing. The number of civilian casualties is now in the thousands of those killed and injured, and more than 1.5 million people are IDPs. Just have a hard think about these shocking figures. Russia proposed the adoption of a draft resolution with a call for a humanitarian ceasefire back on the 16th of October. This was a short, depoliticized, broadly, fully rather humanitarian text. Unfortunately, it was not supported by most members of the Council. National 
and, frankly speaking, narrow self-centered ideological and political interests prevailed over the aim of stopping the, a humanitarian disaster. Exactly one week ago, the US blocked the second attempt by the Council to produce a response to the horrific crisis by vetoing the draft humanitarian resolution that was prepared by Brazil. And they were the only ones who voted against our proposed amendments with a call for a rapid humanitarian ceasefire and a condemnation of all arbitrary attacks on civilians. It became clear from that that U the US doesn't quite simply want for the UN Security Council decisions to have any kind of influence on a possible offensive by Israel in Gaza on the ground. That, along with gross violations of IHL, would risk provoking an even larger scale conflict in the region and possibly even beyond. Now the US, trying to tamper the sharp criticism against it for using its veto, and this is from the international community, is trying to push through a kind of new draft, plumped full of politicised, irrelevant and very dubious provisions. I'd like to point out that no normal consultative process on it was conducted in the Council, despite the fact that our American colleague has just assured us of the very opposite. The sponsors ignored practically all comments made by delegations and also the practice of working on draft documents. The American delegation directly refused other Security Council members the opportunity of consulting with capitals, establishing unrealistic urgent deadlines. It's not surprising that the final product doesn't reach in any way the most basic standards of quality, it still does not contain a call for a ceasefire. It has no condemnation of arbitrary attacks on civilians and civilian objects in Gaza. There's no denial of any actions seeking to ensure the forced movement of civilians. This extremely politicised document clearly has one aim, not to save civilians, but to shore up the US's political situation in the region through pinning labels. The sponsors used a tactical ruse and shoved their document full of an uh, unsystematic number of humanitarian measures that Israel could carry out during its ground offensive. However, of course, they strove to ensure that nothing in the draft would prevent West Jerusalem from carrying it out. Essentially, the US resolution is a license for this, in fact, and from the Security Council, moreover. Well, thousands of Palestinians uh, continue to die. The Council cannot allow itself such a resolution, otherwise it would lead to its full discreditation. The American colleague mentioned the numerous NGOs that are providing assistance. I'd like to say that the first thing that these NGOs are asking for humanitarian organisations that want to give help is a ceasefire. Another significant legal problem in the draft is the reference to the right to self-defence, which, as was confirmed by the International Court in its advisory opinion of 2004, is inadmissible when we're talking about an occupying power. And Israel, regarding the Palestinian territories, is precisely that. We see no point in supporting a document whose aim is solely one thing, to serve the geopolitical interests of one Security Council member that is not only not able to stop the escalation, but de facto is giving it a green light by linking acts of force uh, and linking it to a number of toothless humanitarian conditions. We trust that the majority of our colleagues will act like us in the Security Council. Otherwise, as I already said, it would be a very serious blow to the Council's authority. In order for the UN Security Council to be able to carry out its mandate to ensure the maintenance of international peace and security, we have prepared a draft uh, alternative resolution. It was compiled based on approved humanitarian language and the most useful elements from the American, Brazilian and the first Russian draft. We see no reason why members of the Security Council would refuse to support it because only if a 
uh, c c cessation of violence or a ceasefire um, and a stopping of this new uh, spiral of violence is something that doesn't fall in with their plans. This l is last attempt of at the council is, is something that really is in line with its functions, and I would very much urge you not to miss this opportunity. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. I shall first put to vote the draft resolution contained in document S-2023-792 submitted by the United States of America. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S-2023-792 please raise the hand. Votes, uh, those against? Abstentions? The result of the voting is as follows. Ten votes in favor, three votes against, two votes abstention. The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the Security Council. Okay, now this one. Now I give the floor to those members of the council the, who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the permanent representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. The United States is deeply disappointed that Russia and China vetoed this resolution. A resolution that, as I've said, was strong and it was balanced. That was the product of consultations with members of this council. We did listen to all of you. We incorporated feedback and we worked to forge consensus around a resolution that would send a clear message to the world. And most importantly, to Israelis and Palestinians that this council is determined to meet this moment. Colleagues, we should not encourage Russia's cynical and irresponsible behavior by voting for its tax, which was offered up at the very last minute, as I said earlier, with zero consultation, and which contains a number of problematic sections. Though today's vote was a setback, we must not be deterred. The United States stands by our text, and we stand ready to work with all member states to support the efforts of the Secretary General, President Biden, and Secretary Blinken. In cooperation with many countries around the, this table and in the region to build a more peaceful and secure future for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of the United States for the statement, and now I give the floor to the permanent representative of China. I thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, China voted against the draft resolution which, just, which has just been put to vote. This position is based on facts, based on law, and it is based on conscience and based on justice, and also based on the urgent course of the entire world, in particular the Arab countries. We all recall that last Wednesday, 
a draft resolution focusing on the humanitarian situation in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, emphasizing the protection of civilians, and supported by an overwhelming majority of council members, failed to be adopted because of a veto. On Saturday evening, the U.S. introduced a new draft text that set aside the consensus of the members and included many elements that were still deeply divisive and that, were, went, that went far beyond the humanitarian realm. Several members, including China, um, Russia, UAE, and Brazil, proposed amendments to the text. However, the proponent ignored the major concerns of all parties and made only cosmetic changes to the draft. And it was printed in blue in order to push the council to vote on it. In terms of its content, the draft is seriously out of balance and confuses right and wrong. In terms of the approach, the draft was introduced in haste and lacked the consensus it deserved. In terms of its effectiveness, the draft does not reflect the world's strongest cause for a ceasefire. An end, an end to the fighting, and it does not help uh, to resolve the issue based on the above. The draft text is evidently not in a position to be adopted. Mr. President, China in no way opposes Council taking action. On the contrary, we have always strongly called for the Council to play a responsive role, responsible role. What we oppose is that the draft resolution is evasive on the most urgent issue of ending the fighting, and that it has never been able to call for an immediate ceasefire in clear and in unambiguous terms. At this moment, ceasefire is not only a diplomatic term. It means the life and death of many civilians. In if a resolution from the Security Council is ambiguous on the issue of war and peace, it's irresponsible and it's also extremely dangerous. It's tantamount to paving the way for large-scale military action and giving the green light to further escalation of the war. China is by no means indifferent to acts that harm civilians. On the contrary, we strongly condemn at the first opportunity all violence and attacks against civilians and called for diplomatic efforts to promote the early release of the hostages. What we oppose is that the draft text does not call on the parties concerned to stop the indiscriminate and asymmetrical use of force, nor does it call for a thorough investigation into the heinous attack on the El Ahli Hospital. Such selective application of international law and double standards will only push more innocent civilians to the brink of death. China is by no means indifferent to the sufferings of the people in Gaza. On the contrary, we have always strongly called for the opening of relief corridors, ensuring humanitarian access and avoiding a humanitarian disaster. What we oppose is that the draft text selectively avoids referring to the root causes of the current humanitarian crisis in Gaza and fails to urge Israel to lift the full blockade of Gaza and to rescind the evac evacuation order for northern Gaza. Such an evasive approach is only will only accelerate Gaza's descent into an even greater humanitarian disaster. China is is in no way denying Israel, Israel's security concerns. On the contrary, we have always strongly advocated that equal attention should be paid to the security concerns and legitimate rights of both Israel and Palestine. What we oppose is, the, is that the draft text attempt to establish a new narrative on the Palestinian-Israeli issue, ignoring the fact that the Palestinian territories have been occupied for a long time and avoiding evading the fundamental issue of independent statehood for the Palestinian people. It's worth being vigilant that the draft 
uh, departs from the spirit of previous UN resolutions and embeds the dangerous logic of confrontation of civilizations and the justification of war and use of force. If the draft is, uh, is adopted, it is completely it will completely dash the prospect for the realization of the two-state solution and plunge the Palestinian and Israeli peoples into a vicious cycle of hatred and confrontation. Based on the above, China will uh, vote in favor of the draft resolution proposed by the Russian Federation. Mr. President, China has no selfish interest in the uh, on the question of Palestine. Any initiative that contributes to peace will receive China's staunch support. Any endeavor that facilitates Palestinian-Israeli reconciliation will be pursued by China with uh, all-out uh, efforts. Since the outbreak of the new round of uh, conflict, China has actively advocated that the Council take meaningful action and make binding decisions on the Palestinian-Israeli situation as soon as possible. We also emphasize that the action and decisions of the Council must respect facts of history, take the right di direction, and reflect due responsibilities and accountability so as to ensure that they stand the test of morality and conscience. We are ready to continue to work with the uh, members of the Council and the international community to play a constructive role in putting an end to the fighting, protect civilians, avert further humanitarian catastrophes, and realizing a comprehensive, just, and lasting solution to the question of Palestine. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of China for his uh, statement. And I now give the floor to the permanent representative of Albania. Thank you, Mr. President. We thank the United States for their work and genuine efforts in narrowing as much as possible the differences in order to respond to the urgency of the situation on the ground. We welcomed a balanced draft which condemns the terrorist attack of Hamas and calls for the liberation of hostages expresses sympathy for all innocent victims, reaffirms the right of states to self-defense in compliance with the obligations under international law, calls for the protection of civilians and for humanitarian pauses and humanitarian corridors to ensure unhindered humanitarian aid to those in need. It also welcomed the efforts of all regional and international actors to avoid a spillover and reaffirms the commitment for a political solution to the Middle East conflict. Albania deeply regrets the draft resolution was vetoed. Mr. President, we know perfection is the enemy of good. There are times when the urgency of the matter and the complexity of the issue ask for swift action, doing the best possible under the given circumstances, even though one would have liked and hoped for more. This draft was certainly one of those cases, because there is a time to draw a line in order to make actions matter, have the impact we are seeking. The U.S. draft may not have been ideal. We supported it as an improved and reasonable way forward at this time, at this very particular moment, responding to critical issues and urgent needs as the best possible way to condemn terrorism and to respond to the urgency to protect civilians and ensure humanitarian aid on the ground. Therefore, we deeply, deeply regret that the Security Council was prevented to decide on a text that provides for the urgent, urgently needed humanitarian pauses and humanitarian corridors. Mr. President and colleagues, this veto will not help the people in Gaza. It will not help those taken hostages. It will not help humanitarian workers, and it will not make it easier for the UN on the ground. And while, as the Security Council proves, unable to take the right decisions, we know the result. Hamas and other terrorist and extremist groups will feel empowered because there is no internationally agreed condemnation there is no global sanction of the unacceptable. Mr. President, despite success, successive failures, we must not lose hope. We cannot, because, we cannot renounce because it is not only our job, it is our responsibility. We will continue to work in good faith to have the Council act on this critical issue in a balanced and fair manner, discharge its responsibilities, but also maintain its deeply affected credibility. I thank you. I thank the permanent representative of Albania for his statement, and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of Ecuador. Gracias. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, members of the Security Council, we voted in favor of the draft resolution which we have just had before us. The text was introduced after a negotiating process in which 
many members of the Council participated. The draft contains elements of great urgency and relevance. For example, the draft reaffirms the obligation to respect and comply fully with all obligations under international law, international human rights law, international law on refugees, and international humanitarian law. The draft also requ requests that all measures necessary be adopted, including specifically humanitarian pauses, in order to allow for full, rapid, safe, unhindered humanitarian access and to allow humanitarian and medical personnel through and to make sure they are protected. The states have right to defend their population and to uh, defend their country legitimate, legitimately. And that should be stand alongside international law. And we saw that that was clearly pointed out in the draft. Mr. President, I'm convinced that each and every one of us members of this council believe that the text could be improved upon. But I'm also fully convinced that we are not all going to agree on which part needs to be improved or how to do it. It will not help us to seek a perfect text when it's far too late or when it becomes irrelevant. As I pointed out last Wednesday, we are convinced that the Council must not remain silent in view of clear threats to international peace and security and with increasingly worsening humanitarian consequences. And therefore, Mr. President, once again, we regret that less than a week afterwards we are unable to arrive at a majority decision within the Council because of the use of the veto. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of Ecuador for his statement, and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of Japan. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Japan voted in favor of today's resolution proposed by the United States with the hope that it would help improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza and prevent further deterioration. It is therefore our deep regret that it was not adopted. We must ensure that humanitarian aid reaches those desperately in need, and this resolution would have taken measurable steps to these ends. In fact, this draft resolution contains many important and positive elements to address deteriorating humanitarian situations like never before in Gaza. We cannot agree with the argument that the draft resolution could be construed as something that gives green light to unlawful acts. Those who have any doubt on that, please read the draft resolution carefully yourself. We are grateful for the ongoing diplomatic outreach of key actors, including the United States, towards de-escalation. We also stress that civilian and humanitarian facilities must be protected in accordance with international humanitarian law by all parties. In conclusion, it is important that this Council remain engaged on this file and be ready to act whenever necessary. The world is counting on us. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of Japan for his statement. I shall now put to vote the draft resolution contained in document S-2023-795, submitted by the Russian Federation, the Republic of Sudan, and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S-2023-795 please raise their hands. Those against? Abstentions? How many abstentions?
The result of the voting is as follows. Four votes in favor, two votes against, nine abstentions. The draft resolution has not been ad adopted, having failed to obtain the required number of votes. Now I give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make a statement after the vote. I give the floor to the represent permanent representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, we regret the fact that the Security Council was not in a position to use yet another opportunity given to it to respond to the unprecedented crisis in the Middle East. The reason why we believe the U.S. draft to be categorically unacceptable is something that I've already laid out in detail. It is very unfortunate that members of the committee that have dug in to their national positions were not brave enough to display strategic wisdom and support the Russian proposed text. Our Albanian colleague who was astonished by the lack of a condemnation for the terrorist attack had an opportunity to correct that by voting in favor of our draft, but he clearly didn't read it carefully and didn't notice all the relevant parts of our text and uh, uh, the inclusion of which he always emotionally talks about. We regret the fact that the Security Council did not meet the hopes pinned upon it. We sought to do everything we could to help this. Now, the challenge of preventing a further ex escalation in the area of the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict s stands with the GA. We support the draft resolution proposed by Jordan on behalf of the Arab group. Russia is one of its co-sponsors. Uh, we urge all member states to support that. Thank you very much. I thank the permanent representative of the Russian Federation, Federation for his statement. And now I give the floor to the permanent representative of the United States. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'll keep this short uh, because, frankly, it's not worth wasting any more time discussing Russia's bad faith resolution. Colleagues, the United States could not support yet another Russian resolution that was put forward with no consultation, that failed to reflect the realities on the ground. It is disappointing that Russia would rather try and score political points and further divide this council than address the current urgent needs of Israelis and Palestinians. We all see that Russia is doing nothing to engage any of the relevant parties or support diplomatic efforts, including by the United Nations, to get more aid into Gaza. We'll say this again. The United States stands ready to work with all member states that are genuinely committed to advancing peace and security. We must put the interests of the region and the world above all else. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for his statement, and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of the United Arab Emirates. Mr. President, the UAE's votes today were strictly on the merit of the draft resolutions submitted to this Council and how they tangibly respond to the dire situation in Gaza. We know what the most pressing humanitarian needs are. The UN and NGOs have been very clear. An immediate humanitarian ceasefire, the release of all hostages, safe, sustained and at scale humanitarian access, fuel for hospitals and desalination plants, water, and adherence to international humanitarian law. Yesterday, we heard dozens of statements imploring this council to assign the same value to Palestinian life as it does to Israeli life. We cannot allow any equivocation on this point. There is no hierarchy of civilian lives. These must be the priorities of any resolution adopted by this Council. Furthermore, we cannot be silent on the question of forced displacement 
and the evacuation order. Crucially, the Gaza Strip is occupied territory. There should be no ambiguity about that. We still hope that forging consensus is possible, but clearly it will require more work. The stakes are too high. Civilians in Gaza cannot be abandoned. The Security Council must step up, as we have heard clearly from countless foreign ministers just yesterday. And that is the work that the UAE will turn to now. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of the United Arab Emirates for her statement. And I now give the floor to the representative of Gabon. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Gabon voted in favor of the two draft resolutions introduced respectively by the United States delegation and the Russian delegation to express our support for the Palestinian and Israeli people, as well as our commitment to peace. It is that commitment to peace and the desire to protect civilians that led us to vote in favor of the resolutions introduced by Russia and then Brazil on the 16th and 18th of October. Through this vote, my country is reaffirming its support for any initiative allowing uh, human lives to be saved in order to improve the fate of civilian populations and to ensure de-escalation. Those references appear in both draft resolutions which Gabon supported, namely condemning terrorist acts uh, which took place by uh, Hamas against the Israeli people on the 7th of October, the uh, right to guarantee civilian people and civilian infrastructures as well as uh, protect humanitarian workers. The important need for uh, supply of goods is absolutely necessary for the civilians in Gaza. The requirement to immediately release without any conditions all hostages our commitment to a peaceful solution to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, as well as our commitment to a two-state solution. We regret that antagonism within this council and the lack of unity has meant that we are unable to arrive at a consensus text. We are aware of the fact that the texts put forward do not take on board all of our legitimate concerns, but Gabon feels that these draft resolutions contain elements which could make a difference on the ground, in particular on the humanitarian front. Acts of terror carried out on the 7th of October are by Hamas led to a resumption of hostilities on a large scale on Israeli soil in Gaza and in occupied West Bank. All of the indiscriminate bombings which have followed have led to an escalation of violence, the repercussions of which have been dramatic on the civilian population and have destabilized the region, and they require a response from the Council. Once again, Gabon is calling upon all parties for restraint to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. Unfettered access, a, an end to forced displacement of people in Gaza, the opening of humanitarian corridors, the unconditional release of hostages will undoubtedly contribute to the calm that we all seek. We reiterate as well our call for a lifting of the blockade against Gaza and the cessation of hostilities which would put an end to the despair that men, women, and children who are now facing as they stand before death. We support the Israeli victims, and it's crucial for those who are accountable for the acts carried out by Hamas to be brought to justice uh, for their actions. We will continue to repeat it. The solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is political in nature. Diplomacy, negotiation, and dialogue are the only ways the international community has to ensure that the legitimate concerns of both parties are respected. Self-determination and the right to security and will guarantee peace and security for the Palestinian and Israeli people. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Gabon for her statement, and I give the floor to the permanent representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, President. We regret 
that the draft resolution proposed by the United States was not adopted. The text would have had a real impact on the ground by calling for hostages to be released, for aid to get in, including through humanitarian pauses. Through this resolution, the Security Council would have rightly and for the first time unequivocally condemned Hamas terrorist attacks. The United Kingdom could not support the resolution proposed by Russia, which once again failed to recognize Israel's right to self-defense. As so many of us have said, there is a grave crisis unfolding in the Middle East. The Russian text was put to a vote without a single minute of consultation with the council members. It was not a serious attempt to have this council speak with one voice. We are committed to continuing to work across the council towards a balanced text that condemns Hamas, reaffirms Israel's right to defend itself, is clear on the need for everything to be done to protect civilians in line with international humanitarian law and gets more aid flowing into Gaza. I thank you. I thank the permanent representative of the um, United Kingdom for her statement, and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of Ghana. Thank you, Mr. President. We regret that once again the veto has been used to prevent the Council from shouldering its responsibilities in a critical situation that demands decisive action. The trajectory of the ongoing war between the state of Israel and Hamas is simply not sustainable and could engulf the entire region if we do not effectively mobilize as a council. The civilian cost so far is unacceptable, and more human suffering would occur if we do not act. It is for this reason that we are deeply saddened by the council's continuing inability to positively influence events on the ground by speaking in one voice to protect civilians and to stop the bloodshed. Indeed, Ghana had hoped that the US-sponsored draft resolution which, as a council, we had worked on over the weekend to improve the humanitarian language, including clear references to humanitarian pauses, could have garnered council support. While we supported the draft resolution, we still believe that the order for civilians and UN staff to evacuate all areas in Gaza, north of the Wadi Gaza, and relocate in southern Gaza need to be rescinded to save human lives. We thank the Russian Federation for their draft resolution. However, we would have wished for more time to consider the various proposals. In concluding, we reiterate our call for all efforts to be directed towards de-escalating the rising tensions and for our actions to be guided by humanitarian considerations, even in this difficult and tragic moment. I thank you. I thank the representative of Ghana for her statement, and now I give the floor to the permanent representative of Japan. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Our efforts at this very juncture should be focused upon humanitarian problems that continue to deteriorate. And from that uh, viewpoint, Russian draft contains important elements. We note the incorporation of languages from drafts by Brazil and the US. At the same time, the Council, that has primary responsibility to maintain international peace and security, should refer to practical measures that could deter and prevent heinous terror attacks such as prevention of arms export or dis disrupting financing. We also think it is important for every member state, every member state, I say, to recognize the right to defend itself and its people. Every member state, without distinction, has such right that has to be exercised in full compliance with international law. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of Japan for his statement, and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of Ecuador. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, as I said yesterday, 
this council must not become an arena for rivalry among its members. On the contrary, it should be a space for reconciliation, peace, and international solidarity. The proposed decisions of this council should be seen as tools which will contribute to achieving our collective goals. They must not be an end in themselves, much less, much less should they become political or media trophies. The text of a resolution must be decided on through, or cannot rather, be decided on simply by the will of a single member without allowing for any comments from others. Negotiations in good faith must be the basis for any output of this Council. Not to respect that principle would be uh, creating a very dangerous precedent, and for that reason and for other reasons, we voted uh, to abstain. Thank you. And the representative of Ecuador for his statement, and now I give the floor to the representative of Switzerland. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. The situation in the Middle East requires unified, urgent action from the Council. We have all talked about this since the unjustifiable, shocking actions perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October against innocent Israeli civilians that we firmly condemn. The priority is to protect civilians, rapid, safe and unhindered humanitarian access to Gaza, the release immediately of hostage and pressure to be exerted on the parties to prevent a spillover and regionalization of the convict. We voted in favor of the U.S. presented resolution because it represented, in our view, a first step taken by the Council towards achieving this, even if we call for clearer language, in particular on the protection of civilians. Switzerland abstained on the Russian-presented text in the absence of a consultative process and a lack of desire to find consensus on the substance. Such a process would have enabled us to put forward alternative proposals on important parts and the way of mentioning the uh, tragic events linked to the Al Ali Hospital. Switzerland recognizes the legitimate uh, desire for self-defense of Israel and deplores the loss of lives of thousands of civilians, including women and children, in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory, and in particular in Gaza. It's regrettable that the Council, once again, has not been able to reach consensus and thus show its unity, given the, the existence of a crisis that may well spill over to the entire region. The and lack of adoption of these resolutions is significant. However, Switzerland reiterates that the parties must respect IHL, and in particular regarding the conduct of hostilities, principles of distinction, proportionality, and precaution. Mr. President, the permanent members of the Council are using their veto right this, or they have this rather, and this gives them particular responsibility in the area of the maintenance of international peace and security. We do expect them to shoulder their responsibilities and to have a constructive, inclusive process. Switzerland remains available to support all efforts made by the members of the Council and their partners so that they can use their influence on the parties to bring a swift end to this conflict. Thank you very much indeed. I thank the representative of Switzerland, and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, as the Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs, Catherine Colonna, said before the Council, the situation in the Middle East is very dangerous. The conflict may well spill over, and the Council must therefore act and uphold its responsibilities. It must unambiguously condemn the a Hamas a terrorist attack against Israel. It must call for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. And finally, it must call for the safe, unfettered access for humanitarian aid to the people in Gaza. This Council must also recall that Israel has the right to defend itself and the duty to do so while respecting international law, in particular IHL. France 
calls for the establishment of a humanitarian pause which could lead to a ceasefire. It is absolutely essential for all civilians to be protected. It is for that reason that France voted in favor of the draft resolution put for, to a vote by the United States. France abstained on the draft resolution uh, put forward by the Russian Federation because a number of important elements were lacking. In particular, this tax did not qualify the Hamas attack as terrorist. Moreover, it was not open for negotiation, and we regret that fact. After the unfortunate failure today, France will continue, as it has always done, to be committed in good faith to ensure that this Council upholds its responsibilities. It is our collective duty to redesign a political horizon in order to meet the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people. Hamas does not represent those people. The conditions for lasting peace are well known. These are absolutely essential guarantees for the security of Israel and a state for the Palestinians. That is the line that France will continue to defend and has always defended. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of France for his statement. And now I give the floor to the permanent representative of Malta. Thank you, President. <clears throat> I have the honor to speak on behalf of the elected members of the Security Council, the E10. We regret that, yet again, this Council has not been able to exercise its mandate. Confronted by escalating conflict, a dire humanitarian situation, and the loss of civilian lives, our responsibilities remain clear and present. This Council is obliged to maintain international peace and security and to do its utmost to safeguard the lives of civilians. We also call for the immediate and unconditional release of all remaining hostages. The E10 remains firm in its belief that we must urgently and genuinely address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, whose population is on the brink of calamity. Hundreds of thousands of civilians, including children, have been displaced. Thousands have been killed and injured. We cannot add to their suffering through our inability to find an agreement on a resolution that is desperately needed. Parties must allow aid in, as is their obligation under international law. We need to promote every and all mechanisms that can contribute to ensuring that assistance reaches all those in need throughout Gaza. Possible options include a humanitarian ceasefire, humanitarian pauses and humanitarian corridors. We need to ensure the provision of essential goods and services at scale and sustained. This includes water, fuel, food, electricity and medical supplies. We also recall that civilians are protected under international law and call for safe movement and the protection of civilian objects which are indispensable for the civilian population. While we welcome current efforts towards allowing humanitarian aid into Gaza through Rafa and commend all partners involved, we note that the current volume of aid is utterly limited when assessed with the actual needs of the population. This crisis is also gripped by a growing risk of regional spillover. This demands our undivided attention. We must mitigate such risks through urging all parties to exercise restraint, de-escalate and to respect the norms of international law. It is for this reason that in the coming days the E10 will be working on a new proposal. As elected members of this Council, we also represent the rest of the international community and we have a duty and an obligation to act. There is no time to waste. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative <coughs> of Malta and I now give the floor to the permanent representative of Israel. President, I would like to begin by deeply, 
deeply thanking the United States and every other member of this council that supported this resolution. Voting for a resolution that clearly condemns savage genocidal terrorists while standing up for member states' right to defend itself against terror shows that despite all of the libelous falsehoods spread in the UN's halls, there are still those who stand up for the values of freedom and security. I thank you for your moral clarity in such dark times. To those who voted against this resolution, I must say that your decision shocks me to my core. In Israel, we are fighting for our very survival. My elderly parents living in Ashkelon have spent the last 20 days running back and forth to their bomb shelters as rockets rained down on them, deliberately on them, on civilians. And you cannot condemn even these deliberate attacks on civilians perpetrated by terror organizations? If any of your countries endured a similar massacre, I am certain, certain that you would act with much greater force than Israel, much greater force. There would be no question in your minds that such a barbaric slaughter requires a broad military operation against the terrorists who committed such inhumane atrocities to eradicate their terrorist capabilities in order to make sure that such atrocities can never happen again. How would Moscow react if terrorist death squads wiped out entire neighborhoods in Moscow? How would Beijing respond to if genocidal jihadists beheaded and murdered your babies? I will give you a moment to reflect on that thought. But I believe every person, not only here in this room, across the globe, whoever is watching this discussion, knows exactly how you would respond. So we don't need a moment to reflect. Should the Security Council not condemn the terrorists and their crimes against your innocent civilians, each of you would be just as shaken as I am. You would feel that there is a blatant double standard and that the international community is blind to your agony and that the, council's, the Council isn't taking even the most basic steps that anyone with a slight moral compass should take. This is precisely how the state of Israel feels right now. Those who have voted against the US-led resolution have shown the world that this council is incapable of doing the most basic task of condemning ISIS-like terrorists and cannot confirm the right to self-defense of the victim of these heinous crimes. Israel has been attacked and continues to be attacked. This is a fact. In the south from Hamas and in the north from Hezbollah. What a surprise. Meanwhile, the other resolution, the, the Russian resolution voted upon today, sought to tie Israel's hands, preventing us from eliminating a, a threat to our existence and permitting the genocidal terrorists to regroup so they can massacre us again. The absurdity to call on Israel to rescind the call for temporary evacuation is truly unbelievable and goes against every value that this council represents. By demanding Israel to call on Gazans to return north, the resolution only serves to maximize civilian casualties, not mitigate them. Why would Israel ask Gazans to return to an active war zone? We cherish life and take every measure to minimize civilian fatalities, casualties. We are not fighting the Palestinians. We are fighting only the Hamas ISIS terrorists. Civilians should never be deliberately put in harm's way. Furthermore, the alternative resolution, the Russian resolution, makes no mention of our right to self-defense, nor does it mention Hezbollah, the terrorist force on Israel's northern border that has spent the past weeks firing rockets without any reason mortars and anti-tank missiles at Israeli towns and cities. Would Moscow or Beijing be given a right to self-defense if faced with the same threat? 
I believe so. Finally, if this other resolution truly focused on the humanitarian situation, as it was presented in the first time, the over 220 hostages being held by Hamas would not be a general side note at the very end of the resolution. It would be the first demand. The hostages held by Hamas must be the top humanitarian priority of the international community. Their well-being should come before aiding the supporters of the terrorists who abducted them, before. Despite the wording of the Russian resolution, there can never be any false immoral comparisons between the Hamas savages and the law-abiding democracy of Israel. Israel is fighting sheer evil, and this should be crystal clear to every person in this room. Hamas has perpetrated the most barbaric massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. Hamas is solely responsible for the Palestinians' situation in Gaza. Hamas is committing crimes against humanity. In the wake of the Holocaust, we collectively swore never again. This was one of the main reasons the UN was established. Never again, dear colleagues, is now. Do not forget this. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of Israel for his statement. The, the, rep, the permanent representative of the Russian Federation has asked for the floor to make a further statement. I give him the floor. Mr. President, I would just like... I'd just like to say a few words to respond to what has just been said by the PR of Israel. The PR of Israel put a rhetorical question. What would Moscow do if there were terrorist attacks on the Russian Federation? The response to this question is very clear. Russia has encountered international terrorism, for example, during what happened in Chechnya at the end of the 1990s, beginning of the 2000s. Then, many people sitting here in this chamber told us that we were not encountering international terrorism, but with a national liberation movement and urged us to say, to talk to the Chechens. We talked to the Chechens then, but we didn't talk to the terrorists, we destroyed them. Just as well, as well we, uh, when the terrorists uh, took a hospital in Budionovsk, we eradicated them there in Dubrovka, where they took the, uh, the uh, cinema, and then in Beslan, where they killed innocent children. I'd like to draw your attention to what the PR said, sir, to, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that in our statements, in our resolutions, there is a condemnation of terrorism and expressions of sympathy with the rightful rage of Israel regarding the deaths of its civilians. We now are encountering terrorist acts as well. And we don't talk to terrorists, we talk to the Chechens, and as a result, Chechen is now a peaceful Russian Republic, Republic that is part, an integral part of the Russian Federation. And the Chechens are indeed in the special military operation of Russia and are fully in the army. That is what it means to talk to the people, but we don't talk to terrorists. And so we're not asking you to reject a fight with terrorism, but rather to fight terrorism to fight terrorists and not to fight civilians. So we're not in any way denying Israel's right to protect itself from terrorist attacks. Please, could you bear that in mind when you decide to comment on our statements in the future? Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. The permanent representative of China has asked for the floor to make a further statement. I give the permanent representative of China the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I will be very brief. I only wanted to say, my distinguished PR of Israel, 
having a debate with Israel was not my intention. That Israel treats China as a rival, either as a rival. You picked the wrong target, probably. You should be aware that from the very start of this round of conflict between Palestine and Israel, China has unequivocally condemned all acts that harm civilians in violation of international law. When we refer to civilians, they include both Palestinian civilians and those of Israel. Second, regarding today's resolutions, you made some comments. I'd like to remind you that just last week, this council, there was a resolution before the council which contained elements that condemned, condemned Hamas attacks. China voted in favor of the resolution. However, that resolution was vetoed. Third, in my earlier statement, I made it abundantly clear that China is not denying Israel's legitimate concerns. However, we emphasize equal attention to the legitimate security concerns and legitimate rights of both Palestine and Israel in the current circumstances. When we try to deal properly with this round of the conflict between Palestine and Israel, we cannot deny that the rights of the Palestinian people have for a very long time not been properly guaranteed. And the only way out, we believe, is the two-state two solution. But that has not been properly settled. So let's be frank, let's be honest, face up to facts, and put aside differences, and join forces to handle well the prevailing issues and also to chart a path whereby both Palestinians and Israelis, Israelis can live in harmony, tranquility, peace, and happiness. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of China for his statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.